You know, the difference between a soda and a water bottle, then you have your goals by beginning with the end of mind. And then the third habit is put first things first. That means you have to put the things that you need to get done to, in order to accomplish those goals first. And that also means what else? What else does it mean? Not just doing the things you need to do, but you also have to say, it's a word that starts with end. What's that? No. Sometimes you've got to say no to things that will keep you from putting first things first, right? Things that are going to get you away from accomplishing that goal. Who can tell me what the fourth habit is? Yes, the fire. Win win. Win win. What does it mean to think win win? Matt, what does it mean to think win win? Uh, you forgot? That's alright, don't worry about it. Someone else will help them out. What does it mean to think win win? Yeah. Um, help others. Alright, helping others. Yeah, what does it mean? Okay, so thank you, Like, how is this benefit you as well as the other? Yeah, it's, it's thinking about how you both can get what you want to accomplish. It's, it's saying, okay, what do we need to do here so we both can accomplish our goals? All right, that's great, great way of looking at it. All right, and what was the what was the fifth habit we talked about, Michael? Seek first, understand, and what does it mean to seek first, understand, then to be understood? Understand where someone else is coming from. Exactly, you have to understand where someone else is coming from, then try to be understood, right? And we talked about a person that's quick to listen, slow to speak, is slow to get angry. angry, right? Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. So when we try to understand other people first and not just try to project what we want to get across, then we're trying to understand people and not just try to get our ideas across. So that brings us to our sixth habit, right? We've got two more habits. Left, and then you have to be done with this because you guys learn, you'll be experts in the seven highly effective habits. I'm just kidding. You can always grow and learn more and more each time. <coughs> so, habit six is called synergize. All right, you can put those up really quick. It synergize, this is kind of the definition of what it means. It means that you value other people's strengths and learn from them. All right, it, 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 it's really the essence of being a true team player. Right? You see other people on your team and they're good at something that maybe you're not as good at and you try to seek and learn from them. Like in the field that I'm in, I try to learn from a couple different coordinators and education stations because they're really good at what they do. Uh, my boss, Nicole, like she is phenomenal at um, dealing, with, uh, dealing with parents and relationships with that parents. So I try to learn from her. I try to mimic what she does so I can try to have those same relationships with them. A person who synergizes, they get along well with others 
even people who are different from them are from me. Like if you are truly a person that synergizes, you're a person trying to relate to other people even if they're different from you. You see the value and worth in a person, right? And who they are, and so you try to relate to that, right? And so a person that synergizes, I work well in groups. People that are really uh, good at synergizing, they work well, they're a team player, they work well in groups. <coughs> they also seek out other people's ideas to solve problems. That ties back to last week, seek first, understand, then to be understood. I think a person that truly synergizes is a person that really tries to see other people's perspectives. So that way, they can try to bring their ideas, their thoughts into their team, right? And here's the thing, a person that synergizes knows that two heads are better than one, right? I'm a person, I'm a better person when I let other people into my life and work. So, a person who synergizes is a person who realizes that, you know what, you guys have improved a lot at that, um, at the beach ball thing. You're going to get another chance at the end of the lesson today. You know, we were hitting it back and forth. You guys were hitting it back and forth. That's the longest you guys have ever gotten. You guys actually, like, spread out. You kind of were communicating with each other how to hit it back and forth. You guys did a much better job this time communicating. I think if we do it by the end of this lesson, I think you guys will get two minutes. I really do. You guys are getting so much closer. You're at like a minute and 40 seconds. We're only 20 seconds off. I think you guys are going to do it in this lesson because you guys are doing a good job of trying to get other people involved and listening to their ideas. So we're going to put forward another idea. <coughs> so, what I'm going to do here in a second is there was, the, there was the saying that said two heads are better than one. Do you agree or disagree with that? Why or why not? And what I want you to do real quick is I'm going to let you guys get off the move around a little bit here. And so what's going to happen is we don't need the journal like part, but we are going to find someone in a different row. You're going to find someone in a different row. You're going to give them a high five. You're going to introduce yourself, all right? And the shortest person is going to share first. And you're both going to answer the question, do you agree with the statement? Do you agree or disagree? Two heads are better than one. And explain your reasoning, ready? So in five, four, three, two, one, two, one, two, one, go. <laughs> synergizing their ideas together might not work, right? So we have to make sure we seek first to understand other people before we're understood so that way we can compromise our ideas and use our ideas to work better as a team. Is that kind of where you're going? Yeah. Right? Okay, good. Good. Good, good, good conversation starter. Next, yeah. Uh, I disagree because this is just my opinion. I like to work alone. Okay. Just like so I can get things done. I don't have like the, uh, the So if you play baseball, right? You play first base, third base, what position you play? You play them all at the same time? Yeah. Do, don't you need your teammates to be in position though? Don't you have to work with them? You see what I'm saying though? Like you guys can't you can't be in all nine positions at once, can you? I mean, okay. unless like unless you're like unless you're like flash or something, then yeah, maybe you could there, but yeah. That, that's tough. That's tough. Ryan, what'd you say? Um, I agree with it because um, the BBC actually did a test in which they had a jar of jelly beans and guess how many there are. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just went around their uh, work complex, they got yeah. 200 people to answer, and their average was like five jelly beans long. When it was two people working together, you said? 200. 200 people working together? 200 people, uh, they just went around the building and just asked everyone, their average was so are you saying they work better together than work by themselves, is what you're saying? Yes. Because they were all communicating with each other about how No, I mean, they, they, they went around, they weren't like talking to each other, they just went around and asked everyone, they averaged everyone's guesses out. 
Oh, okay, so they, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah, okay, good. Yeah. Um, I think I have one of the things that I've learned So you kind of play off, of maybe you don't know this, but this partner knows that, or you know something your partner doesn't know, so yeah. you kind of play off that, yeah. that strength of knowledge, like you might know this, they might not know it, yeah. or they might know something you don't know. Like, for instance, like here at, like, here at Quest, like when I, when I was looking at my staff, like Miss Joyce is a phenomenal artist. I am not. It's just not a strength of mine. One of the reasons why I like putting her in charge of creation is she's just a very creative person. Miss Vicky back there, a lot more organized than I am. She helps me out with attendance. She collects permission. So she's got her own. Her and Christy got their own little system going. Make sure that I have all the permission slips. I mean, they just do things that I'm not strong at, and I can use that. You know, Mr. Cody's in the gym with you guys. You know, he's got experience doing games and, and, and being in charge of that. So I can try to look at those kinds of things and see what people are strong at to make me better. Because I can't do everything at once. I need their help. Um, so I've got to go high on those other people. Mr. Wall. Um, <coughs> honestly, I think it depends on the situation. Like, if it's a, uh, if it's like a second grader and a seventh grader, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to you know, so, okay, maybe there are different levels. Okay. Stephen Hawking is a genius, though, too. Though. Yeah, he's got to be a genius. All right, so, okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. All right, thank you guys for sharing your ideas. So, here's the thing. So, I want you guys to think to yourselves real quick, and we're not going to get up and move around this time. I just want you to think to yourself. I want you to make a list in your head of times when you had to work with other people at home school or church in your clubs and sports. <coughs> and I want you guys to raise your hand and share the different areas. What's what, Michael? Baseball. Baseball. Matt, what's the number two where you get work with the team? At a park, you were doing like a team thing at a park? No, I had help park cars. Park and cars. Oh, well, you were working with the team to help park cars? Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. Dalton, where were you? Soccer, so sports and Danny Kyle. I'm going to say soccer. Soccer, right. <laughs> oh, so you and another partner were designing what said it again? Just a box. Cool, cool. Brianna. Um, when I play dodgeball, we do, we do like different balls, and we'll try to try to Oh, yeah, okay, so she's the classic example of our most famous pen dodgeball game. How uh, you guys will like strategize like to have certain people in front of the pin and certain people will wait and hold on the ball so they can throw more balls at once to try to knock the pin over. That's a good example, Trevor. At the food bank. The food bank. Yeah, you guys get to work together really well. It's a great example. When we went to the St. Louis food bank, you guys packed 15,000 pounds of potatoes. You remember he said that was enough to feed one family for what, 11, 11 years? years. One, person one person for 11 years. One person yeah. for 11 years. And then how many total families in the St. Louis area? It's like 10,000 or something? 1,200. 12,000 12, families in the same area would benefit from you guys paying. But you guys, there was what, 60, I think there was 59 or 60 of us that day broken up in small teams. You guys had to work together collectively. You know, uh, I don't know if it was Mike's team had a really good method where you guys would like just literally get all the bags out, you guys as many bags out as you could. You guys would just pack those, pack those potatoes. I mean, just tip potatoes in the bag, tie it up, squeeze the air out. I watched you guys like passing the fork. Like one person would put the potatoes in, one person would grab the bag, make sure the air was squeezed out, then you guys would have one person tie it through it. I don't know. I mean, that was you were what Mike's did that day, right? No, we were Mr. Major. You were Mr. Major? No, it was Mr. Major. Mr. Major, we did that. Yeah. You guys were doing it too. There was a couple other groups I saw doing it. You guys were definitely working really well with that. John was another way. At yeah, school and gym. Yes, school and gym, definitely. We were running the mile. We all worked together to get a class. And we took the trip and we made it from here to the trip. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, um, at school and Spectra. Okay. Five Bible. Okay, so you guys are supposed to do one more. Uh, construction 
There's no shortage. Yeah, they definitely have to work together. They have to definitely work together for safety reasons, especially. They have to coordinate with their building things and be careful so they hurt themselves. So we see that in a lot of different other places. Go ahead and click on this slide. All right, so everybody is different or unique, unique, right? We all have different qualities, different talents, different abilities, right? In what ways is this a good thing, and how does this help you when you are working with a group on a product? All right, so this is what's going to happen. You guys are going to get up here when I do a countdown. You're going to find someone two rows away from you. No, you guys are going to go across the aisles. You find someone across the aisle, and that's someone in there. And what you're going to do is, is you guys are going to answer these two questions. In what ways is it a good thing to be different or unique? And then I want you guys to also answer the second part of the question, which says, how does this help you when you are working with a group on a project? So there's two questions there. What ways is being different and unique, or being different and unique a good thing? And then how does this help you when you're working with a group on a project? Five, four, three, two, one, go. One, two, three, go. So, it says, how does everyone being different make things harder? 
How can you overcome these challenges? Would it be easier if everyone had the same personality, looks, talents, and interests? So here's the thing. This is the question you're going to answer. You're going to answer this first part here. How does everyone being different make things harder, and how can you overcome these challenges? You're going to stand up, and you're going to find someone three rows in front of you. Go. Go. <laughs> yeah, please go. Go back. <laughs> Yeah. 
Okay, so maybe starting the first first one. Then. Okay. Let me ask you guys this: Would it be easier if everyone had the teach same person? Them What's that? Teach them. Oh, okay, so maybe you could teach them, maybe you could show them what you know. That's a great point, so you can give them one. Absolutely, definitely, yeah, you can, you can try to pass on some of the knowledge and ability you have to another person to help make them better. What I like about that, that's like iron sharpening iron, man. If you like, that's like a person taking their talents and their abilities and making the other person better by trying to show them to be better. Like, for instance, like, you guys see, how many of you see diamonds before? Like, I have diamonds here in this room, right? There's only one thing in the world that can cut diamonds, right? Diamonds. Yeah, only diamonds can cut diamonds, right? Am I correct about that? For yeah. sure. I'm pretty sure it's the hardest. I could be wrong about that. If I'm wrong, sorry. My bad. Point being, point being is, is if, you know, if you're a stronger person, maybe you can use some of your talent and abilities to make that person stronger as well, too. Um, and so that way, what ends up happening is, is you're building that person up. You're giving them some new knowledge or some new skill that can help them out. Like you can show them how to do something. So that way, they feel like they're part of the group. They feel like they're, you're essentially showing someone how to get better. You're making them a better person by doing that. So let's go ahead and put the board on the other side. So um, what we're going to do here in a second, is, is it says right here, it says celebrate differences. And what you're going to do is if you're going to pair up with someone you don't usually work or play with here, all right? And you're going to come up with at least five differences and five things you have in common. Now, here's the deal. If you're going to stay with your partner. It has to be someone different. <laughs> Get out of your comfort zone. Find someone different. Girls, it's a boy. Boys, it's a girl. Whatever it needs to be, you need to find someone. And what you're going to do is, is you guys are going to come up with five differences and five things you have in common. And I'm going to come around and ask some of the uh, uh, pairs to share what they came up with. So go find a partner. Go. You have five seconds. Five. <laughs>
I know one thing that's for sure I like about both of you. You guys are both shy. I think you are. I know you're shy because you're my nephew. We've seen, not shy in a bad way, but you guys are just kind of. Mom, are you? Yeah. What, what are some things you guys have in common? Both play baseball, so you both like baseball. Both play basketball, so you both are athletic, maybe? Yeah. Like playing sports, you like that. Are you, but you wouldn't say you wouldn't say you're using the same amount. That's kind of maybe one difference. You guys have to be careful about that. What are other ways you guys are different? You don't know? Alright. Thank you guys for coming. Let's get another group, uh, another another group to come up here. Alright, we're gonna bring your part of <laughs> You don't. You're not a very athletic person, so he's more athletic than you are. And then one difference, another difference, Trevor. Yeah, that's different. Okay. What else? What else besides that? Up, oh, left ones. Thank you. All right. What else is different about you guys? Just came up with those two. He is one day. Okay, it's different. I'm looking more personality wise, though. Like, different ways you like do things or see things, maybe. What I, else? I can be more isolated than you. Okay, you can be more drawn or isolated than you. Okay, you like being around people more? Okay, so you're more probably in what they would like to You're probably more of an introvert. You don't necessarily have to have any attention on you all the time. You like it when people have attention. I like you. I don't have any attention. That's what I mean. Just kidding. Um, I understand it. Okay, so what are some ways that you guys were like? You both like laughing, so that means you obviously like humor. You like having a good time, maybe. That's a good thing. Alright, so they have to be some kind of what else do you guys have in common? So you like watching sports, you like watching sports. You don't play sports, but you do like enjoy watching them. Okay, what else? <coughs> you both like other watching. Just that up. No, no, I'm just kidding. Well, I appreciate you guys doing that. You guys both like coming to me. You guys have that in common. Awesome. Alright, Pepsi. Pepsi. Alright, I don't have time to bring everyone up here. I have to deliver your couple of them. But here's the deal. Listen up. Here's the thing. When you guys are working in a group, you've got to identify some similarities and you've got to identify the differences. Because identifying the differences allows you to realize maybe this is an area that you're weak in or it's an area where um, you need to try to avoid the conflict. But in the ways that you are alike, you guys can have that common ground to work from, right? So like Brianna, let's say they're working on an athletic competition. Well, maybe, maybe Brianna's not the most athletic person in the world. Trevor is, you know, um, they can kind of, kind of figure out, you know, what she is good at and what she can do. And then Trevor can kind of do his part and figure it out, okay, this is where I can help her out at, you know, and this is where Brianna identifies where her strengths are at and doing stuff like that. So they can kind of synergize those ideas and put them together and work together with each other to accomplish that goal. So go ahead and put forward those slides real quick. So we're not going to get together and talk about this. Let's, let's talk about what this quote means. I'll just have, uh, I'll just call some people here. What does this quote mean? Is it true? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? All right, so just think about those questions. And the quote is this. Everyone is in love with his own idea. They're from Carl Gustav. So, <clears throat> everyone is in love with his own ideas. What does this quote mean? Do you think it's true? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Please explore it. Let's let the debate begin. <laughs> Mr. Finchian. Yes. Someone did uh, it. I think that it's not true. Oh, well, what it means is that people should like their own ideas. I you think it means people should like their own ideas? Yes. Okay. But I think it's not true um, because you can have bad ideas that okay. you think you like, but then when someone corrects you, you don't want them. Oh, uh, okay. So, okay. I'm very good for one. Yes. Um, what does this quote mean? Well, a lot of people uh, really like their own ideas. Yeah. Um, it's true, 
most of the time. Yeah. And is it a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it's usually a good thing, but I mean, it can it can get out of control. Yeah. Like I, I, one thing that comes to mind when I look at this is like, is this book, is it true, is it a good thing? I think it's true. And, and I, what this quote means to me is that every person wants their idea to be what everyone does. All right? I'm kind of looking at this going, this is, this is kind of human nature in the sense of we always want our ideas and our thoughts to be out there. We want to be heard. We want to be the person that, that's at the forefront of doing stuff. And so I think everyone has this golden, great idea. And, and yeah. We're in love with our own ideas, and so yeah, I think it's true. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, it depends. I think it's a bad thing is, is when you're not willing to listen to other people's ideas. If you're not willing to put your idea to the side and say no to yourself, and try to maybe hear and understand what other people are trying to suggest, that's where it becomes a bad thing. It could be a good thing in the sense that if you do have a good idea and you like your idea, and you think it's a strong idea, if you can identify different people in your group that can help you accomplish that idea and use them and pull their strengths into your idea that they can accomplish. Now you have to be careful about that too because too many times we try to make our ideas and push it and push it and push it on people and we don't try to get their input because sometimes you might have an idea and the idea is probably the right idea maybe but it needs to be what's refined and you're like what is the word refined? Well when they have oil we don't just drill oil in the ground, take it, and make it into gasoline. We have to refine the oil and make it into gasoline. We have to pull all the impurities and bad things out of it. Sometimes in ideas, there's things that need to be strengthened or improved or better, and that's where you need other people to come in and help you with that. All right? So, so that's why... Yeah, what's that? Yeah, like editors or something that bring us that. You're right. Well, this what we need a person likes their idea and they want to fix their idea to best. Yes, it is true, and it's not exactly a good thing. If you like your own idea too much, you're going to just say, well, screw other people's ideas. Mine's going to go ahead of all of them. And just, you think you're the best, and you do it. Put yourself and at some level, I think we don't value people because I think we kind of look at it and go, you know what, my idea is the best, not theirs, which means I'm better than that person is. I'm not going to listen to anything they have to say. So I think when we try to put our own ideas and be selfish about it, I think we're telling people, I'm better than you. Your idea doesn't matter. It has no opinion in my book. And we have to be really careful about that. We can really hurt people's feelings and we can make them feel devalued and not respected. Yeah. I think it's true. Yeah, I think it's a bad thing. Because if you Anything else for anyone else to add to that? I can go ahead and put the one All right. So, I have never in my mind, this quote says, I have never in my life learned anything from a, any man who agreed with me. I love this quote. There's always going to be people who disagree with you or don't agree fully with everything you say. How can having someone disagree with you help you learn? Explain your thoughts. How, how, how can someone disagree with you help you learn? Mr. Lindsay, how can someone disagreeing with you help you learn make you a better person? I'm going to make you better. I'm going to give it a shot. Maybe if you came up with an idea that the other person might be right, that might help you come up with a person's idea. Okay. I think that if someone agrees with you all the time, you'll never know that you're wrong, so you won't learn anything from that. But like, someone who disagrees with you, if you find out that they're right, you can learn from them. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important for us to have people that like, kind of, um, that kind of, we come from look at our ideas and stuff and say, you know, I see what you're trying to do here, but I don't know if this is the right way to go about it. Maybe try this instead. What having that kind of opinion and that thought gets gets me thinking. I love hearing different ideas from my staff to work on next year. You could probably try to do this instead of this next year. I always try to change things up because I'm always trying to hear different perspectives and ideas that are going to make things go better for class. And 
and say with a group like, it's okay if people don't agree with your idea. You might be able to gain a perspective or some knowledge from them that you're not seeing, and it's going to allow your idea to actually be stronger and better because they're going to be able to help you strengthen it and make it better because they're going to be able to provide insight that maybe you're not seeing because you're so hyper-focused on your idea, you're not seeing where the weaknesses are. Maybe they can identify the weaknesses and say, you know what, Pat, if you were to do this, this, and this, then your idea would be really good, but you've got to do this, this, and this to prove it. So having people disagree with you is a great thing because I think it allows us to have discussion about how to make our ideas and our group work better. Go ahead and put All right, so here's what you do. Let's say you've been asked to put together a, a dream team, a team to create a new invention. If you could choose anyone in the world who would be on your team, you must explain your reason. You may have five teammates. We're not going to share with our partners what you're going to do right here in your spot. I want you guys to close your eyes right now. Close your eyes. I want you to think of five people in the world you would want on your team to come up with a new invention. And you don't necessarily have to know what the invention is going to be, but there's five people you want to work with to make an invention with. I'm going to give you 40 seconds to kind of visualize that in your head, and then I'm going to have some people share. <coughs> you also have to come up with a reason, too. So you'll, you'll list the five people and tell me a reason why. All right. Go ahead. Anybody? Elena Field. Who are five people you'd want on your team? Anyone in the world you can think of that you want on your team, the reason why you have them. You don't necessarily have to give me all five, you just give me a couple of the reason why. The first one. You didn't think about anyone? Okay. All right, let's go. Michael, who are five people you'd want on your team? Um, I guess it depends on what it would be for. Well, what are five people? Which tells me you weren't thinking about it at all. Um, I guess my friends and stuff that we won't get along. Okay, what friends and what? What do they bring to the table? Um, you guys want to think about it again and try this again? Oh! Okay. Brian, who are some people? Nicole is Tesla and Mr. Pagani. Nicole and Tesla, why would you take Mr. Tesla? Okay, Tesla. He could probably invent something random. Kind of how to drive that baby, killing people like Jim Sauter, Sauter. And Mr. Pagani, he's a physical creator for Pagani. Okay. Are, are they, like, what kind of, like, what kind of character traits do they bring to the table? Like, are they uh, tall? Are they okay, smart? Well, Tesla, okay, you might have been saying in the later life, but okay. like, he was, he's basically genius. He has all these ideas. <laughs> A lot of ideas to think outside of the box, maybe. What about Pagano? Did I say that right? Pagano? Um, he uh, does the he does the design for the manufacturer. Okay. So basically, he could actually build the thing. Okay, so, you know, Tesla comes up with the idea, Pagano can actually put it together and build it. Very good. All right, Ina, who do you have? I have Andrew, Okay. So why? Why would you get this person to your team? Okay, so you enjoy the company. That makes it easy to work with. That's a good thing. What else? Okay, absolutely. How do they work? Do they work with people get involved with the team? Or are they selfish? Are they vulnerable to other people's ideas? Even if people don't agree with them? Good. So they listen well. They have great ideas. So they call. They enjoy to work with. That makes it. Easy to work with people. Yeah, exactly. Jacob. Um, I would choose <coughs> Stephen Hawking okay. uh, and Why? he's a genius and he knows a lot They did. 
and they did. I mean, that's why they won a championship. Those guys, I mean, those guys were willing to sacrifice their personal stats and scoring more points just so they could accomplish a championship because they were willing. You know what? Instead of me just taking the shots all the time, I'm going to have to move the ball around and find an open guy and that will guarantee that we can win. All right? Who would you pick, Alex? <laughs> you would think I'll go with them? Okay. I've never lied to Grant too much. All right, hands down. Let's go for the next slide. All right, so here's what you're asking to plan. And you work in group, and you're going to have to do this today once we get done here, and we're going to launch it, and do our, our, our activity team building activity after this. This is what you're going to have to do. You guys are going to have to define the problem. <clears throat> Make sure you understand the problem or task at hand. If you don't do that, then you're not going to be able to figure out how to do things. Their way. To understand everyone's idea is the best solution. What is going to make the team the most We're going to one of you to come out to the center. And we're going to start in the center. I'm going to tell the first group of kids the first word. You're going to run back to your group and you're going to act it out. You cannot talk. The person acting cannot make any noise. It is up to your group to guess the right word. Once you get the right word, the next person is going to come to the center and get their word. The first, there are 20 words on this list that every group has to do. So everybody should be coming to the center. I don't want to see the same kids coming to the center every time. Some people have to do it twice, probably. Once you finish those 20 words, you're going to run back to your group, you're going to sit down, and that'll be the end. Does that make sense? All right, so, facilitators, go ahead and take the first person to come to the middle. You guys just need to make this in one person. Everyone hear that word? Yeah. We're going to act it out. All right, you guys ready? Make it very clear if you are the one doing the acting. If you're doing the acting, you may not talk. You may not talk. We might just have to disqualify your team because there's no really other fair way to do it. Don't oh, talk. Well, once they get the word, you can say okay. You can say yes. No, then you're going to send the next person out as soon as you get the word. Your facilitators are going to be there to make sure that you're not cheating, like acting like you got the word when you really didn't, or talking. And they are going to make sure that each person, uh, each person that goes at least once. Okay. Yeah.